It was back in 1961 that a curious miniature motorcycle was seen putting around Honda's Tomatek Park in Japan and at the Suzuka Circuit. One of the most popular rides in the park was the Z100, a cute little mini bike which was loved by many kids. The Z100 sported a red frame under a white gas tank, tiny 5-inch wheels and a 50cc engine. Riders were said to appear, of all things, Simeon, and henceforth the motorcycle came to be known as the Honda Monkey. Looking more like a toy than a motorcycle, the compactness and fresh appearance of the monkey scored high with fans of all ages. Due to its success, Honda revamped the Z100 Park version for use on public roads, and brought out the CZ100 model, which began to be exported, in limited numbers, in 1963. The engine was from the Super Cub Z100. The tank and the seat were taken from the Sport Cub C111. Until 1966 there were only minor modifications to this bike. In 1967 the CZ100 was revamped and had its name changed to Honda Z50M. The Z50M was the first model to be marketed in Japan. The monkey could be easily stored on a car truck or mobile home, or even aboard a boat. The Monkey Z50M featured fold-down handlebars and a retracting seat. This version was also the first one equipped with the newer Cub engine with the overhead cam. In 1969 Honda launched the Honda Z50Z, the Japanese version of the common A-series, which were sold in the United States and Europe. The Z version sold only in Japan, had a removable front fork for easier transportation and gliding for street use. The A-series, also launched in 1969, was called the Mini Trail in the US and Monkey in the rest of the world. The first US series, also known as the K0 model, was produced for the off-road market only and not equipped with a lighting system. There were some slight differences in the following series between the US and European versions like a bigger headlight and turn signals on the Monkey version. Each new version had a K designation. Honda did this almost every year with the Monkey and Mini Trail. The K0 was followed up by the K1, K2, K3 etc. Because the Z50 A-Series bikes for the US market in 1970 were street legal, Honda also produced the QA50. This model was specially designed for off-road use because of the lack of lighting. It also had its own unique engine. The QA50 was only built for five years until the K3 version in 1975. In the US the Mini Trail was still sold as the Z50A and this version continued until the K6, while the Monkey was changed from Z50A K3 into Z50J in 1973. Almost every year Honda launched a new series of the Z50J with three different models, mostly with different colors and decals. Besides the Monkey versions Z50JI and Z50JII, Honda also launched the Z50J3 with a larger fuel tank and four-speed manual clutch engine, also called the Gorilla. Honda produced the Monkey in quantity, with minor modifications, until 1999. The Monkey is still produced every year in small numbers for special editions to keep up tradition for collectors and Monkey maniacs. Most are not available in the U.S., Genesis of the CT70 and ST70 In 1968 Honda also started work on a prototype of a bigger version of the Monkey that could carry two people. The engine was upgraded a 70cc version to meet the demand for more power. The first prototype is very similar to the official first series produced in 1969. Differences between those two were a smaller headlight, like those used on the US Z58 Mini Trail versions, with a small round speedometer. The seat, designed for an extra passenger, was slightly longer. It had an upswept exhaust but the openings in the heat shield were of a horizontal striped pattern. The front fender was high mounted to the front fork as was done with the CT70 models. The side emblems were missing in the main decals between the front fork and the seat where the aluminum pressed Honda sign screwed onto the frame. The carburetor was larger and the inlet manifold had a straight 90 degree angle. The prototype, unlike production models, had no turn signals. Like the Monkey Z50Z, Honda launched its first model in 1969 with a detachable front fork named the DAX ST70Z General Export. The name DAX is a reference to the Dachshunds, the silhouette of which bears a resemblance to the frame shape of the ST70. The ST70Z model came with a 70cc semi-automatic 3-speed engine.
It came in two versions, Type 1, a road-oriented bike and Type 2, which was more of a dual-purpose machine, like the CT70 model sold in the US. Type 1 had a low-mounted exhaust and metal frame decals like the prototype. It was also fitted with bigger, ducktail fenders painted in silver. It was issued in three colors, candy ruby red, candy sapphire blue, and candy gold. The second type had smaller, CT70 style, chrome fenders and an upswept exhaust. The decals were the familiar black white stripe, Honda version. The type 2 was available in candy ruby red, candy sapphire blue and candy special yellow. Both models had larger headlights with triangular shaped speedometer and small chrome turn signals. For the US market, Honda introduced a second model, based on the ST70 called the CT70. This model was intended more for off-road use. It had no detachable front fork and no turn signals. The front fender was mounted directly onto the front fork, higher than the Japanese version, which had a chrome mounting bracket. The CT70 was also equipped with an engine guard and spark plug guard to protect the engine while riding in rough terrain. Honda launched the CT70K0 in 1969 with a three-speed semi-automatic gearbox. The CT70H model with a four-speed manual gearbox was introduced in 1970. The first series came in six colors. The CT70K0, Candy Ruby Red, Candy Sapphire Blue, and Candy Gold. The CT70HK0, Candy Topaz Orange, Candy Emerald Green, and Candy Blue Green. Honda also produced the DAX for the European market. This took longer because of differing laws and regulations for road vehicles in different countries. The first European DAXs were sold in 1970 and carried a K1 designation. In Europe, the DAX sold in two versions. Besides the ST70, there was also a model called the ST50 with a 50cc engine. This was because in many European countries the ST50 is considered a moped and the ST70 a motorcycle. One must be 18 years of age and licensed to legally ride a motorcycle in most EU countries. There are a number of small differences between the DAXs depending upon the market for which they were intended. Tail lights, turn signals, headlights, mirrors etc. are mostly the same, but the biggest differences involve the German types ST50 and ST70. The German type was equipped with the Type 1 ducktail fenders but in combination with an upswept muffler, larger headlight and a square-shaped speedometer. The turn signals on the ST70 version were placed further away from the body and it was equipped with a chrome luggage rack. The taillight was round and colored half orange half red. The special 50cc version was marked as ST50G, Germany. In addition to the normal production models of the ST70, Honda also produced a special edition called the White Dax, also known as Lady Dax. It was painted in ceramic white and had white-black-green decals and a special seat with green top with printed flower pattern. Today, these are a rare find. In 1972 Honda stopped selling the Type 1 and only sold Daxes with an upswept muffler and chrome fenders except for Germany where they kept the ducktail fenders. That same year the K2 model was introduced. Due to new regulations, this version was limited to a speed of 45 km per hour, 28 miles per hour. It had a governed flywheel, smaller carburetor, smaller intake and milder cam. A footnote in 1972 was the ST90, the big brother of the CT70 and ST70, which was also called Mighty Dex. The ST90 was equipped with a 90cc engine similar to that found in the CT90 model. It was a larger, heavier engine with a beefier transmission and clutch. The frame was similar in design and construction to the CT70 and ST70 models, but was larger. It had 14-inch wheels and was only sold in the US. Sadly, it didn't last long and after three years Honda produced the last ST90. In 1978 Honda brought out the K3 model. The biggest differences from the previous versions are the colors and restyled decals. It came in four versions. Candy Ruby Red with White Blue Black Flame Striped Decals Candy Riviera Blue with Yellow White Black Flame Striped Decals Mighty Green with Yellow Black White Flame Striped Decals or Shiny Orange with Yellow Black White Flame Striped Decals
In this year Honda stopped selling the ST70 in Germany. In the United Kingdom they continued selling the ST70 and Honda also produced a candy smoke brown version with yellow black white flame striped decals. The last ST5070s for Europe were produced circa 1979-1980 followed up by the CY50 Naughty Dax or R&P, another short production run bike with a vertical cylinder engine, plastic fenders, and wider tires. US market CT70 models had their own evolution. The KI and HK1 models were produced in 1972 and came in candy ruby red and candy yellow special. This was a unique and, to many, the most desirable model combining the best of the old classic aesthetics available for speed manual and no turn signals. It was the first year for hydraulic front forks and the only year they were gaiterless, using metal covers in place of the accordion-like rubber fork gaiters. In contrast, the ST70 DAX models would not get the hydraulic forks until the AB model DAX was introduced many years later. The round speedometer separate headlight, seat trim strip and redesigned muffler heat shield were also introduced on this model. Unfortunately, it was also the last year for the 4-speed manual H model. The K1 HK1 CT70 also had the largest taillight Honda ever used on these bikes. Today, the HK1 is the rarest of the CT70 models produced in the 1970s. In 1973 the K2 model was introduced. Four gators replaced the painted metal lower fork covers of the K1s and the upper fork covers headlight mounts were chrome. The K2 could be had in either Candy Riviera Blue or Candy Topaz Orange. The 1974 K3 model was the same as the K2, except that turn signals were added for the first time. In 1975, the K4 was produced. The decals were unique to this model and beginning with this model, candy colors were no longer offered. The only color available was Mighty Green. The spark plug guard was now painted black instead of chrome plated. Rapid inflation during the 1970s was forcing Honda to cut costs and the paint and plug guard were the first casualties of a long-term cost-cutting program. In 1976, the K model designation was dropped. Due to US federal regulations, manufacturers were required to declare model year designations. The 1977 model saw a return to body color upper fork covers headlight mounts. Shiny orange was the only color offered. The 1978 model was the only model CT70 ever painted black and this was the last year for the engine spark plug guards, chrome plated muffler heat shield and folding handlebars. 1979 saw the introduction of BMX style handlebars and was the last year for the second type hydraulic forks, upper fork covers and seat trim strip. Muffler heat shields were painted black and the rear shock covers were gone from 1979 on, as the last of the chrome disappeared due to cost. The only color available was bright yellow. For the US market, Honda kept producing CT70. By 1980 it bore relatively little resemblance to the earlier model CT70s or the ST70, although parts such as the frame and engine were always the same. To better suit off-road riding, as well as further reduce costs, the fenders were made of plastic beginning with the 1980 model and mounted much higher on the fork. This was also the first year for another new fork design with sweeper style seals and internal springs. Along with the new fork, a new, more softly padded seat and better rear shocks were introduced. The 1980 models had the nicest ride quality, as well as the longest suspension travel of the CT70s produced up to that time. The ignition lock was moved from the LH side of the frame to the triple tree and the speedometer had the redesigned face. The future series of the CT70 type were based on this model and produced by Honda until US model production ceased at the end of 1982. Tahitian red would be the only color offered on CT70s. Honda relaunched the DAX in 1986 with a few but significant technical improvements and designated it the AB23 instead of ST70. Now it had a 12-volt engine with camshaft ball bearings, a hydraulic front fork and a chrome rear fender, with a plastic mud flap the upswept muffler was painted black and the heat shield had round holes the same as the CT70. The turn signals were replaced by bigger, square, plastic units on flexible stocks, replacing the better looking but damage prone chrome ones found on the earlier bikes. This model was issued in three colors, candy ruby red,
candy sapphire blue and silver. The 70cc version was only sold in France. Introduced in 1987 were the Honda Monkey ZB and Monkey RRT, a new type of bike with an all-new aluminum frame and monoshock rear suspension. These were based on bigger motorcycles of the day for reasons of both aesthetics and performance. They were equipped with 8-inch wheels, but the bike appears bigger than the Z50J Monkey. The Honda Monkey ZB and R models came in black red and white red, the RT version in metallic blue. The US model CT70 was reintroduced in 1991. It is virtually the same as the 1982 model except that the seat has a new latching mechanism that also allows the seat to be locked, and the wheels were painted white instead of the cloud silver that had been the norm since 1969. The tank decals were also new. In 1991 the first 8023 DAX was finally updated. This time a black painted engine, black muffler, painted fenders, white rims, and again new decals. It appeared in the colors Italian red, Shasta white and black. The red version was similar in appearance to the US market CT70 of the same era. The main difference being the low mounted fender and original style folding handlebars on the decks. The two models which had evolved into distinctly different bikes, had finally come full circle at the end of their production runs.